Okay, I think after today, or not so much after today, but after this radio, I think I've come to the conclusion that there is no such thing as a broken Motorola CM540. <laughs> I can't seem to get a broken one. I bought this to just have it as a parts chassis. Uh, I actually had to go count. The last one of these, I actually did a video on one of these here not too long ago to show, you know, go over the features, I actually opened it up and showed the inside. So if you want to see what these look like on the inside, I went over a lot of the nice, really nice features, the adjustable IF gain, adjustable A&L, the screaming fast uh, scan rate on these things. Uh, go look at that video. This is not an overview of the radio. Um, but, uh, See, it's actually hooked up to an antenna. There's absolutely no skip right now. I mean, it is, the airwaves are just dead silent. But, uh, in any case, I bought this, I paid $30 for it. I actually, and I, I was getting ready to say, I actually had to go count how many of these radios I have, because I honestly had lost count of them. I have nine now. <laughs> I thought it was around five or six, maybe something like that. Something like that. Well, with the addition of this one, I now have nine of them. Um, I really love them. I mean, it's, in my opinion, the absolute best AM-only mobile radio ever made. Um, just phenomenal reception quality. Transmit sounds good, but the receive... Um, w w between these three controls makes them, you know, just infinitely adjustable to block out splatter and noise and whatnot. But, so I'd like to have a parts chassis, <laughs> you know, just in case one of mine ever would, you know, something would happen to go up in one of those that's, uh, you know, an unobtainium part, and it's nice to have parts chassis. I like to have parts chassis for pretty much everything that I own, so, you know, pretty much every radio that's out there, I like to have two of them, a, you know, a good working one and a parts chassis. Now, I stock most parts I have, even for a lot of those unobtainium parts, I do have a lot of that stuff in stock, but occasionally there might be something. I can't find a broken one, no matter how bad they look, crappy picture i i just you know i just can't get a broken one these seem to be the indestructible radio i mean they are built like a tank and this one was used in i guess you would call it commercial application so i'm sure it, this thing was not babied um it looks like it has had some severe sun scorching over the decades the uh speaker cover you know the piece of cloth that covers the speaker in the top you can see it's pretty much sun bleached white the rubber buttons are no longer rubber. They're hard, just disintegrating. That's why they look kind of funny. They're actually disintegrating. You can see it. See the orange right there? That's the dust I just scraped off of them. <sighs> yeah, that's how hard they are. They're actually disintegrating. So, I mean, this thing's had a hard life. The glue's dried out. The face plates, you know, that's no biggie. I just need some spot of glue. But, then, you know, this thing has been baked in the sun. Um, so, you can see it works. I'll turn it off here. Now, it did not include the, mic the you know, very rare microphone, because these are very rare microphones. They have the mic gain channel up, down, you know, it has all the buttons built into them, so they're very specialized, you know, shitload of pins in there. But, uh, you know, like I say, this was a commercial radio. It's not like this was owned by a private individual. This belonged to a university. University of Florida, <laughs> in fact. So, you know, I don't know. I, the more of these I see and get, the more I like them. Well, like I say, it's my favorite AM radio to start with. It's not like <laughs> it can get better. But, uh, yeah, no matter how abused, used, and abused they seem to be, uh, they just don't ever seem to break. Which, hey, that's a good thing. So, yeah, there's a... Oh, and how much did I pay for it? 30 bucks. <laughs> You know, I've paid, you know, well, way into the hundred, you know, over a hundred. I think probably the most I ever paid was, I did pay a little over $300 for one one time. Um, and honestly, I think that was a steal. It's brand new in a box, has never been used. Um, and I will probably never use that one other than I just turned it on to, yep, it works. Put it back in the box, back in its bag, in the box and everything. But uh, normally, you know. I end up getting them for a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars, and I think that's an absolute steal at that price. Like I say, for they are, in my opinion, the best AM radios ever made. Um, I saw this one. I figured thirty bucks. It's got to have some problems, so it'll be a good parts chassis radio. Nah, hook up a power cord, works just fine. Unbelievable. So there's another eBay steal. <laughs>